In this video, we're going to prove that this function here, f of x equals the square root of the absolute value of x cubed, is actually differentiable at x equals 0. So proof. To do this, we're just going to use the definition of what it means for a function to be differentiable at 0. So we're just going to look at the limit as h approaches 0 of f of, well normally it's f of x plus h, but here our x is 0, so this is 0 plus h minus f of x, but again x is 0, so this is f of 0, all being divided by h. So if we show that this limit exists, we're done with the proof, and we've shown that our function is differentiable at x equals 0. So this is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of h minus f of 0. Let's go ahead and evaluate f of 0. If you plug in 0 here, you're simply going to get the absolute value of 0 cubed, and then we're going to take the square root. Well, that's the square root of 0, which is just 0. So this is minus 0 over h, and this is equal to the limit as h approaches 0. Well, f of h, it's just f of x, and we replace all of the x's with h's. So this is the square root of the absolute value of h cubed minus 0, so I won't bother writing it, over h. Now, if you plug in 0 here, you see that it doesn't work very well. So the trick is to rewrite this in a more convenient way. This is the limit as h approaches 0. Let's write this as the absolute value of h to the 3 halves over h. And then, and, and we can do that, right? We can think of this like this. And that's simply the absolute value of h to the 3 halves. Now the trick here, again, is to get this to work. We want this limit to exist. So what we'll do is we'll write it as follows. This is the absolute value of h times, and then there's a 1 here. So what do we need here? We need the absolute value of h to the 1 half because then 1 half plus 1 is 3 halves. And then over here we have h. All right, now we should be able to show that this limit uh, exists. So to show it exists, we have to deal with this absolute value. And that's why we did this, because whenever you have a limit and you're approaching 0 and you have an absolute value, you can actually deal with it if you use the definition of absolute value. So the absolute value of h, this is equal to h if h is greater than or equal to 0, and minus h if h is less than 0. So what we'll do is take one-sided limits. So we'll let h approach 0 from the left. And when we do that, well, what happens? The absolute value of h, that's simply this one, negative h. So it's negative h times the absolute value of h to the 1 half over h. And these cancel, so we get the limit as h approaches 0 from the left of minus absolute value of h to the 1 half. And now we can go ahead and plug in 0, and we get negative 0, which is simply 0. Now we'll do the same thing and take the limit from the right. So the limit as h approaches 0 from the right well, if we're approaching from the right, then h is bigger than 0. So we're using this piece. So this is h times the absolute value of h to the 1 half over h. And the h is cancel, so this is the limit as h approaches 0 from the right of the absolute value of h to the 1 half. Now we can plug in 0, and we get 0. So we get 0 in any case, so the limit as h approaches 0 of the absolute value of h times the absolute value of h to the 1 half, all being divided by h, is actually equal to 0. So the limit exists, right? That This limit here exists. And so our function is differentiable at 0.